We have signed a deal with Stellantis uh, months ago, uh, quite a, quite some time ago actually, uh, on infrastructure, and we gave them the ex exact same amount as we gave Volkswagen. And we need the, the federal government to come to the table and uh, show their support like they have all along. They've been great partners, by the way, in every deal that we've made. So we, we need them to uh, work with Stellantis. A massive auto plant deal is in jeopardy, the seg second biggest auto plant deal in Canadian history to be exact. Last year, the feds and automaker Stellantis announced a $5 billion investment to bring 2,500 jobs with an EV battery plant to Windsor, Ontario. But then this year, the feds announced Volkswagen is coming to St. Thomas, Ontario with its own plant. And this time, the feds had to compete with U.S. President Joe Biden's big business subsidies. Recently, the German automaker announced that the feds will get up, or sorry, the feds will give the German automaker up to $13 billion to build and operate that plan. Today, Stellantis announced it's halting production in Windsor, or construction in Windsor, insisting that the feds are not living up to their end of the agreement. Here's how that all played out in the House of Commons. Construction in the $5 billion facility has halted because of his incompetence. All other levels of government have done their part, so when will this Liberal government follow through on commitments and get this, built, this plant built and ensure those jobs are protected? We're going to fight for the best deal for Canada, and we're proud of that too. That answer was a little comfort to the workers in Windsor. We need a deal that actually goes through and builds that plant. Time to bring in the front bench. Sabrina Grover was a federal liberal candidate in the 2021 election. She's now a principal at Shakti Strategies. Melanie Parody is former communications director to Erin O'Toole. She's now the president of Texture Communications. Kathleen Monk is former director of communications to the late Jack Layton. She's now principal owner of Monk & Associates. And Laura Stone is a Queen's Park reporter for The Globe and Mail. Hi, everybody. Uh, Laura, let's Hi. start with you because I interviewed Minister Fidelli, the Minister of Economic Development for Ontario, and then right after the Liberal Member of Parliament for, for the area. And what I kind of walked away thinking was this is a very public kind of you-know-what match between the feds and the, and the <laughs> province over who should pay how much, but hanging in the balance is a deal we all thought was actually done. Yeah, I think that's what's really unique about this situation is, is how much it's playing out in the public sphere. We really don't see that kind of negotiation um, in real time. And so that is unique. And we, uh, it really is spurred by this VW deal, which is unprecedented. And as we've heard from multiple people today, the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States and, and Canada's attempts to compete with that. I think Ontario is trying to tread a fine line here because they have worked so closely with Ottawa on so many of these projects. Um, and we heard lots of compliments today, both from Premier Ford and uh, Minister Fideli, on your show, while at the same time, they're sort of trying to criticize them for not spending enough. So um, it's a little awkward. And um, it's, it's hard to know if it's if Stellantis, if this is a negotiating tactic or if it's a real threat. We don't really know the details of how much more they expect uh, the federal government to pay. But I know this is certainly kind of an unprecedented spat playing out in, in public view. And it sets the precedent, I think, with the VW deal. And I asked the Supreme Court today, is it now the expectation that Ottawa has to spend eight to 13 or commit eight to $13 billion for each time we want to build a plant in this country? So, uh, you know, it, it's a kind of a really difficult decision that play for both levels of government. I think it is the expectation, Melanie, from everyone that, that I spoke to, essentially, that, that now companies come here saying, I mean, if you think about it, they could easily go 10 kilometers to the south and get that money from the federal government in the United States. So the expectation is, if you want us to come here, that's the kind of money you're going to have to pony up. I think the political question today is what the feds try are trying to put at the table, on the table right now, which is, it shouldn't all be our resources, the province should be paying more into this than they already are. It just seems like a very interesting juncture to be having that back and forth when the plant was already under construction. Well, the province has gone above and beyond. They made good on all of their commitments. They made the same commitments in this deal as they did with Volkswagen. So there's no reason for the federal government to be casting any blame on Ontario. The real question is, why is it that the federal government has offered a check that now they can't cash? It's outrageous that this deal that everyone thought was done has, has basically fallen apart. And this, to be fair to, to Minister Champagne, this is a minister who has been on a winning streak for a while here. And this seems to be a pretty colossal mess up. 
Uh, it's really unlike him in a way. I can't believe that I'm defending him right now, but he's had a series of great wins. Uh, so this is very strange. It's very disappointing to, to see this deal fall apart at the 11th hour. Um, and it's kind of negotiation 101 to get the deal done and, and like signed on the dotted line, all of your I's dotted, T's crossed before you go and announce another one that might be bigger than that. This, this seems like a rookie mistake and uh, it's quite strange. Or from the Fed's perspective, just because, Sabrina, it already had been announced, maybe, like, keep things as they are, you do your part, the province does their part, and then the next big deal that you want to land, make sure you force the province to pay more then. Like, instead of all of this falling apart so publicly, which I think can do potentially some pretty long-term damage. Yeah, like, listen, I think that this falling apart in the public eye is certainly a speed bump, and it's certainly not great uh, for Champagne or for, for ISA to have this happen. But I also, I don't think it's really, like, fallen apart, right? I do think that this is um, a bit more of a negotiation tactic on Stellantis's part. We also don't know what the internal... Um, considerations are, are for Stellantis. Like, perhaps there's a supply chain issue. Perhaps there's a labor issue. There's usually more to the story than, than comes out in the first 24 hours. And so I think there's probably a bit more digging to be done. And, you know, of course, uh, the, the VW deal was a great deal, and it's, it's moved uh, things forward. It shows the commitment that the government has to this, like, competitive, transformational, industrial policy. And I don't think that there's any indication that they won't come to the table. Uh, they haven't shown that yet. Uh, I think we just need to see where the province can also maybe come back to the table. And I don't think it's unreasonable uh, to expect that they should be at the table, um, perhaps with a bigger paycheck. Do, do you think it's unreasonable, Kathleen? And, and just the only thing I'd add to that is I, I don't know what else may be at play, but I do know what Stellantis said, and it was pretty unequivocal. The mm -hmm. feds are not living up to their sides of the bargain, and we are stopping construction. Exactly. And, and this friction, what's so unique about it really is that normally you would expect all of these contribution agreements to be signed, inked, maybe even in blood, and done almost over a year ago. Well, and so I feel like we should have expected yeah, ex that as exactly. taxpayers. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we thought that was done. And so, so hitting this road right now really poses a risk to the Liberals that all this momentum they have built since 2022, really 2021 when the investments started coming in for more electric vehicles, it risked undoing all of that momentum, particularly how they could stand up beside the IRA, that they could be real competitors and attract all of this investment right now. I mean, and, and they're putting it's really interesting too because this area, as Laura and others would know, is, is a really politically diverse yes. area, right? There are ridings that are orange, there are ridings that are red, there are ridings that are blue. It's conservative, liberal, uh, NDP. Specifically here too, there's three, one of each. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and I think Ford knows that. And so when Premier Ford today says, you know, I'm sure the government's going to step up and do the right thing, he's putting that pressure on Prime Minister Trudeau because he knows the through line for re-election really goes through areas of southwestern Ontario like Windsor and these jobs that are needed. And I think